A man standing 1.54 meters in front of a shaving mirror produces an inverted image 19.4 centimeters in front of it. How close to the mirror should he stand if he wants to form an upright image of his chin that is twice the chin's actual size? Answer should be in centimeters. So let's go ahead and look at what we know. The man's, uh, the man's object distance, so P, we have P, and we know that the image is, we know what Q is, and then we, we also know what he wants, we know what he wants his expected magnification to be. He wants the magnification to be by 2, um, but we don't know, uh, we don't, that's not what it is right now, that's what he wants. So we got to go through, so we got P, Q, and we have the expected, the expected value for M. And so they want to know um, how close should he stand to the mirror. So we want to know what P, what, uh, what P he should have. So this is where he's at right now. Now I'm sure there's probably more than one way to solve this. Uh, I'll show you the way I, I went about it. I went ahead and found what the radius was. So 1 over P plus 1 over Q is equal to 2 over R. And then, of course, you can, uh, you're can you going to have to solve for R. So you get Q plus P over PQ equals uh, 2 over R. Take the inverse, so PQ over Q plus P equals R over 2 times both sides by 2. You get 2PQ over P, Q plus P equals R. And then, so you don't know what, uh, you don't know what, so now we know the radius of the mirror uh, is equal to 2PQ over Q plus P. And we have those, uh, those values actually, so we'll also call this P initial, Q initial, Q initial, P initial. And the radius is constant. So then we want to find out where he should be. Well, if we use the magnification equation, magnification is equal to negative Q over P. So this is the final position and uh, the final position of the image and the final position of the object. He wants it to equal 2x, basically. And so we can solve for one of the variables in this equation. Since in our in our mirror equation, ultimately we need to solve for P. Let's use this one to solve for Q because Q will be one of the unknowns we can cancel out. So Q is going to equal negative MP. And we'll put PF right there. QF is equal to negative MPF. Now we can set up the mirror equation one more time. I want to shrink this down a little bit so I can keep my equation for R up there. So I'm going to write the mirror equation one more time. 1 over P plus 1 over Q is equal to 2 over R. And now I could substitute this R for this equation, uh, which is what I'm prone to do. It's just a bunch of substitution, so I, I don't have to plug things into my calculator more than once. Uh, but you have to be careful keeping track of what P and what Q you're talking about. And the algebra can also get a little bit hairy. So for this example, I'm not going to do that. You're going to have to plug this into your calculator and solve for R, and then use that number for this portion of the equation. Now you have to weigh your risk. If you're good at algebra, go ahead and, and do the substitution. Um, the problem is, uh, where are you going to have more errors? Are you going to have more errors from input into your calculator, or are you going to have more errors from, ca uh, from algebra? So I usually have more errors from typing stuff in my calculator. Uh, which really isn't that often because I usually use Excel for my calculator. So, I, it, But if I use a graphing calculator, I actually usually get more errors. Now I'm going to go ahead and denote that this is the P final and this is the Q final. And I'm going to go ahead and substitute Q final with negative MP. Uh, so 1 over P final plus 1 over negative MP final is equal to 2 over R. Then what I need to do is I need to uh, isolate the term that I'm trying to solve for. So in order to do that, I'm going to factor. So if you look here, this term is 1 over P final. And this term also has 1 over P final. So I can factor out 1 over P final. 1 over P final times 1 minus 1 over M is equal to 2 over R. If I divide this term over, I get 1 over P final 
is equal to 2 over r times 1 minus 1 over m. Now, if you wanted to, uh, you could go ahead and, and um, find common, you can distribute the r, find a common denominator, take the inverse of both sides doing that way. I'm going to do the shortcut. I'm just going to put to the negative 1 right there, and that would make, that would equal p final. And now just remember for m, it's wanting to magnify it by 2 times, so you just put a 2 there. Now, if you were um, courageous enough to go ahead and try to solve the whole thing out algebraically with substitution, the final answer that you should get is that the image p that you're wanting to get, we'll call that p final, is equal to the uh, is equal to q times p times m minus 1 over m times q plus p where these are all initial values the q initial and the p initial so you can plug your numbers in to either this equation or this equation and get the right answer um, but remember with, with this one, you're using all the original numbers that you were given. So P is 1.54 meters, Q 19.4 centimeters. With this one up here, you've solved for R and you're using basically just R and the magnification that you're wanting to get. Now, last thing, it gives you the original object distance in meters, 1.54 meters. My suggestion convert that to, uh, and it, it wants the answer, actually, what does it want the answer, and let's look really quick, all the way back to the beginning, it wants the answer in centimeters, so convert that 1.54 meters into 154 centimeters right off the bat before you start plugging anything in, and uh, if you don't do that, you're going to get the answer wrong. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my blog. The link is down in the About section of this video. And on the blog, you'll find cool stuff like other videos for the same chapter. And you'll also find uh, little download links where you can download calculators to uh, basically just punch in your numbers and solve these exact problems. So you won't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. The last thing I want to say is if you leave comments on YouTube, of course I will get around to responding, but... I'm much faster if you leave them at the bottom of my blog, right down there. Enjoy your day.